Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at simplifying radical expressions. So we have the problem express the square root of 108 in simplest radical form. So now what are we going to need to solve this problem? We need the following property that the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. We're going to combine this concept with perfect squares to answer this problem. So we're looking at the square root of 108. And what we need to do is we need to find a perfect square factor of 108. So now let's just say for some crazy reason we actually knew off the top of our heads that the greatest perfect square factor of 108 was 36. So that would allow us to break this expression down into the square root of 36 times 3. And you could even check this, 36 times 3 is 108. But now what this allows us to do is we could use this property to break this apart into two radicals. So now we could say that this is the square root of 36 times the square root of 3. And now the point of finding a perfect square factor is that now when we have this expression here, the square root of 36, we could just set that equal to 6. So now in the next line, we have the square root of 36 is 6, so we have 6 times the square root of 3. And now uh, this would be in simplest radical form. And now what do we mean by simplest radical form? Well, notice how 3, the only factors of 3, are 3 and 1. So when we want it in simplest radical form, we want the only perfect square factor to be 1. We wouldn't be able to find, let's say, a 4, 9, 16 that would factor out of 3. So this is as simple as this is going to get. So now, let's just say if we didn't know that 36 was the greatest perfect square factor, let's say we went with something else, let's say we chose 9. So we could rewrite this expression. We have the square root of 108. We could break this down into 9 times 12. So we have underneath the square root sign, we have 9 times 12. This is definitely, this is definitely more reasonable because being able to factor numbers with 36, that gets a little bit crazy, but this is just to show you how powerful this technique is. So now we could break this apart into two radicals. Using this property, we have the square root of 9 times the square root of 12. So now in the next line, I want to do two things. We know that the square root of 9 is 3, so we have 3 times, but now instead of the square root of 12, we have another perfect square factor of 4. So we could break 12 down into 4 times 3. And now the reason why we chose 4 is because 4 is a perfect square. So now in the next line we could break this apart into two radicals. So we have 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So now for the next line we could take the square root of 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So for the next line we have 3 times the square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 3 which as I said before the square root of 3 cannot be simplified any further but now the last step is to group these two terms together we have 3 times 2 times radical 3 so we can simplify 3 times 2 is 6 so this tells us that our final answer is 6 times the square root of 3 so notice how with both of these methods we arrive at the same answer this just goes to show you that as long as we keep finding perfect square factors we will get to the same answer every single time but we do need to be careful at this step here if we have the square root of 9 times the square root of 12 we have to have the uh, insight to know that we have to factor 12 further using 4 and 3 so if we can choose the greatest perfect square factor it'll save us a lot of time otherwise as long as we keep finding perfect square factors we're going to get to the same answer Okay, well this is going to conclude this simplifying radicals problem. Thank you all for watching and I hope this video was helpful.